What is going on, guys? I hope everyone had an awesome 4th of July and 4th of July weekend. I'm here today doing something I wanted to do for a long time. I did a couple back in the day. Uh, you know, I had, I think it was like four or five podcasts that I had going on at the same time. But podcasting is something that I really, really got a liking for in the past, uh, I guess, past year. I always liked podcasting ever since I uh, started listening to Cole Cabana's podcast. And I've always wanted to start my own. And I tried it a couple times. And, uh, you know, those times it would be uh, with people. Uh, I think one time I had one with Chris, a.k.a. It's CJ Productions, a.k.a. Chris Likes Movies. Uh, <laughs> I did one with Britton and Kyle. Uh, Kyle, a.k.a. Kick on Hawks. Britton, who is uh, actually going to be on this one today. I wanted to have a place where it wasn't on video, where I could just come, talk about whatever, talk about wrestling, talk about tech, talk about, I don't know, anything I want to. Have my friends on, whether it be in person, uh, which is something I really, really want to do, uh, is you know, in person things, uh, because I just, I just respect the in person interviews more than I do, uh, you know, over the phone interviews. Like a lot of wrestlers that do their podcast where it's over the phone, it's not the same. Like Cole Cabana is someone who will go out of their way to do it in person, and I really respect that, and I really respect the fact that he puts that much time and effort into it because it's real easy. It's really, really easy to just be uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin or you know, Chris Jericho talking about DDP yoga and get into a studio and just sit down, have someone, you know, call up your best friend name. Uh, I don't know, uh, DDP, let's say <laughs> it's really easy for someone to just do that. And it's on the phone, but when it's in person, uh, it, it makes it a whole lot better. Past couple months, I've been subscribed to Wrestling Observer, uh, which is with Brian Alvarez, Dave Meltzer. Uh, I know Brian Alvarez uh, used to do his After X shows. I don't know if he still does it, but I really, really like that. Uh, and then when I became a subscriber to uh, F4W, I mean, the audio quality of Dave Meltzer uh, is, is so good. But then you have Brian Alvarez doing his uh, Brian and Vinny shows, which are really, really good. And... I don't know. I just really, really like the in-person interviews because the audio sounds so good. So that is something that I'm going to bring to this podcast when I can, or it's just going to be really, really good audio as best as I can with Skype, with a phone call. Today, for instance, we had some problems going through and it's the first one. You're going to have problems in the first one. Britain's internet is basically the equivalent to the trash can outside and uh, it just messed up at the end. We get on the phone and uh, it's not as good. But hey, it still works and you still can hear them and uh, you, you use what you use. You know, I say that a lot for people. Uh, I tell a lot of people a, a lot of things. And I, I, if they want to do YouTube videos, if they want to do podcasting, hey, you want to make YouTube videos, you would be perfect for that. Set up your phone, set up your iPod, set up your camera, set up your webcam. Just talk. Just talk to the camera. Uh, you know, you don't need the best stuff. You don't need the best equipment. It's whatever you have, you use, and eventually over time, it gets better because you get better. And once you get better, your equipment gets better, the sound gets better, the video gets better, and people enjoy that more. Um, but at the beginning, you use what you use. So, uh, you know, this one is the first one. We're talking about Raw from 4th of July, uh, which was a fun show, and we get into that, how it's supposed to be not the best Raw, but uh, it turned out to be. So let me know what you think of this first one. I'm going to do more. Uh, it's summertime. I'll have a chance to do more. It should be fun, and I'm excited. So sit back, get something to drink, start playing a video game, go run a mile, go play some basketball. I don't know. Maybe you didn't see Raw on Monday, and you want to know what happens. Well, here you go. It's uh, all the good stuff, I guess you can say. So uh, so let's get into it. We'll be back with Britton Harrison and myself talking about Monday Night Raw from July 4th here in a bit. I've been drinking a lot, ain't got that gun, but I'm taking my shot like a robot. My head's a mechanical box, and it's locked and loaded with some radical thoughts. Magical thoughts, I'm sliding the box. I think I was created with animal parts. Used to be scared, I was sick like a rock, but I became a wash to consume with the sharks. Ha! It's due time for me to do time, but we still in the show. Oh, the fans continue to water the plan, I'll continue to grow. Whoa, all the 
cameras will look at me when I finally decide to go pro. Get it? Got it? Good. A little misunderstood. What? I don't care if you like me. Poison Ivy and the Ivy, the Icy. So loudly, my psyche so highly, I make bitches look good when he's standing beside me. Damn, I'm like a power ranger. Danger, anger mixed with the Oakland Raiders. Cape Crusader taking the elevator to the top of the game. I'm the Undertaker, bitch. Ah. All right, I think everything is set up. So, uh, hello, Britton? Yes. How's it going? It's going. What's this uh, deal about Sonic closed? Yeah, I went to Walmart, had a horrible time. What'd you get at Walmart? Uh, I got milk and Doritos. Milk and Doritos. What kind of milk? Just normal milk or chocolate milk? 2%. Okay. As long as you get 2% milk, that's all that matters. My total came up to 462, and I had 455 on a gift card, and I had another gift card, and I had 70 cents on it, so I had 7 cents on my remaining total. Mm-hmm. My other gift card wouldn't slide. I was at one of the card-only machines. They couldn't cancel the transaction because I paid with a gift card at first, so I had to wait a while for the CSM to just say put 7 cents on a gift card huh. and finish the transaction that way. Well, that sounds like fun. And then you went to Sonic, and it was closed? Yeah, I, w- I was like, oh, I'm going to go to Sonic because, you know, during the summertime, mm-hmm. they're... Their milkshakes are half price after 8 p.m. So I was like, fuck yeah, dude, I'm, 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 I'm going. And I got there, and one of the managers and some other person were just sitting at one of those little benches outside, and all the lights were off. It's tw- It was 12.30 at the time. Well, earlier than 12.30. Why would they be closed on a, two- a Monday night? Oh, I guess it's 4th of July. So I guess that's one of the excuses. But still, it's, it's pr- technically the 5th of July. Anyway... It was like 11.40. Oh. Well, I don't know. It's 4th of July. I guess you can't play them. I guess I forgot it was 4th of July. Raw was supposed to be one of the ones where it was supposed to be the lowest rate of Raw of all time. Uh, that's what a lot of people said. Come on, if you think about it, everyone's out with their families, watching some fireworks, eating some hot dogs. Uh, in in this case, eating some weenies, uh, as Rusev liked to say. Uh, but... Uh, it, I thought it was a good raw overall. You know, I thought it was a good raw. I don't, Britain. How'd you feel about this raw today? I uh, didn't really pay much attention to it, but well, for what you I, did, I enjoyed what I watched. All right. Well, that, well, that's all that matters because honestly, when it comes to it, what you watch is what you see. And there was I was supposed to go somewhere with that, but it didn't work. Uh, so basically, Raw starts off on this Fourth of July Monday uh, with a food fight, a food fight for the ages. This thing was. Oh my god, this thing was so much fun. What a way to start off Raw. You could tell that it was like sectioned off and it was like a a studio type thing that was set up just for that. It wasn't catering or anything like that because someone had to clean it up. I'm sure they just kind of folded in the walls and threw it out back. You could probably go back back behind that arena and it's all in the garbage. Uh, But this food fight was, uh, was crazy. Uh, I love the fact that Kevin Owens just hit under the table because I think that really shows what kind of a you know a person he is not only like just as a person but as like his character uh, where he's like I don't care about this I ain't getting involved in this let me go hide under the table they show him again he's eating chips Kevin Owens is the best I <laughs> I don't even know what to think about this but uh, but man this was definitely a good opening to Raw and uh, I felt like this. Uh, I wouldn't say this was the peak of the show because there was other a lot of good things that happened on the show, a lot of fun things that happened on the show, but that was definitely a big part and a good way to start it off on this 4th of July. Yes. So we got Titus O'Neil versus Rusev for the U.S. title, and let me tell you about this feud. This feud is all messed up. You had Titus O'Neil versus Rusev on the pay-per-view. That was on Father's Day. His kids were sitting front row. He is the father of the year. Why is he not winning the U.S. title on Father's Day when his kids are front row and he's the father of the year. I don't understand this. I don't understand why this feud is still going on. Technically, he lost already to Rusev at Money in the Bank. So why is he still in the title picture? Like, first off, you could easily had him beat Rusev and Father's Day for the title. And then you could easily had... Rusev win win it back the next uh, I don't know the next week or now today you could have had it that would have been great Rusev could have been like oh I beat the filthy American on uh, on Fourth of July and then he could have continued about his burgers and little weenies like he said I don't know I I think this feud is ridiculous it could have started off so so perfect with a win on Father's Day and you know it just comes down to this where Titus O'Neil has another title shot on Monday Night Raw he's in a whole getup. 
of uh, American American swag, I guess you can say. And uh, basically, Rusev does the same thing he did to him at the pay-per-view. He choked him out, made him submit, and uh, Rusev walks out chanting USA and bashing us, the American people. And he told them to go eat their burgers and little weenies. I think that's the third time I said little weenies in this entire thing. I like you were subtweeting me. I'll, I'll beat the first deal Britain on Twitter. Ah. Titus came out looking like a dork. It was America Day, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, still, he could have came out looking better than that. He looked like a dork. I mean, it's Titus O'Neil. He looked like Apollo Creed's, like, drunk uncle. Apollo Creed? Yeah, from the Rocky movies. Oh, I, I, news to me. So Ambrose was in a match against Miz. He beat Miz. I guess we kind of figured that it was champion versus champion match. After the match, Rollins came out, and uh, his match was next, and Dean was walking back. And I, I forgot what happened, but they kind of had this little stare down type thing. I think he patted him on the back. Rollins went in the ring. And then Dean came back running down full sprint like he was doing the John Cena entrance. And he basically ran right past uh, Rollins to go to the commentary table. And this was great for one reason. Because he went to the Spanish announce table and he put on the headset. And for a second there, we thought he was going to be on the Spanish announce team for that night. Holy cow, that would have been the funniest thing ever if he just, like, started talking in, like, Spanish the, the rest of the night. And, uh, and you know, they had you, like, switch over. I think Britton was saying he wanted to switch over to the, the sap button uh, and see what ha- what happened with that. But, man, Dean Ambrose is the man. <laughs> it wouldn't let me switch over to sap. I try going through my TV settings. and I don't even think I, I had that button on my remote. Like They still turned it on, like, to where you could hear what he was saying on the Spanish announce table. Yeah, so at least, at least he got that. But uh, they went to commercial break, and when they came back from commercial, you know how they did the little thing where even though you know what happened and you're waiting for the uh, the comeback, so they come back, and it was a commercial that this Thursday on SmackDown, WWE will announce who Brock Lesnar's opponent is for SummerSlam. I don't know what to say. All I know what to say is this Saturday is UFC 200. I know that uh, obviously Brock's on that show. This week they're doing all the media and stuff for it. Uh, and WWE didn't mention it once. Like, can we can we do like say something about that? Like, they their guy, their biggest name, I'll say, that they currently have under contract is fighting for UFC on the UFC's biggest show of the summer in general. Like SummerSlam, they've been billing it as the biggest event of the summer, and they said it like ten times in a matter of a minute, but. The fact that UFC, uh, or the fact that Brock is on UFC, uh, it just it doesn't make sense that WWE wouldn't mention it once. And I know Stephanie McMahon said something about it, and screw Stephanie because she is not going to mention it, obviously. But I mean, they just want to get all the uh, attention uh, off of Brock's you know UFC thing, and pretty much onto SummerSlam. So I guess this is their way of saying, hey. All right, you could uh, fight at UFC, but we're going to take all the uh, the glory and uh, get some buys for SummerSlam, I guess. But uh, I don't know who this opponent's going to be. I said it should be Kevin Owens. I think Britton had a poll going uh, where he, uh, uh, I think he had Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns and someone else, and a lot of people picked someone else. Yeah, so we'll but have to see who it is, but I have no idea. Someone on Reddit oh. has the scoops on who it is, and they revealed it on Reddit. And, and now... There's been people on Reddit like Falcon Arrow and like uh, Mets fan yep. who have, you know, accurately given like detailed stuff. Like they said that Kevin Owens was going to be debuting the night he debuted. They said that uh, like Seth Rollins would be winning money in the bank. A whole bunch of stuff. And it says, I'm looking at the thing right now. I just saw it as a spoilers. Brock Lesnar, SummerSlam opponent revealed. I don't Go know ahead. if you want me to read Go it. Go ahead. Here. Break the news right on this podcast. It says, I am back, and this time I have Brock Lesnar's SummerSlam opponent for you. Tomorrow on SmackDown, Lesnar will be announced to be facing Randy Orton at SummerSlam. You heard it here. Wow. Well, I mean, honestly, like, people would have found it anyway, because they're, I guarantee, I guarantee when they announce it on SmackDown, unless they do it as, like, a, uh, an edit-in um, for Thursday's show, um, I guarantee you they announce it tomorrow at the tapings. 
like everyone's gonna know by by Wednesday. Not even everyone's gonna know by the end of the day on Tuesday. So I don't understand why they just didn't say tomorrow they're gonna announce it because then I know they want to watch SmackDown, but no one cares about SmackDown right now, honestly. So breaking news on here until the draft. Well, until the draft. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Uh, but I mean, it's Randy Orton. I mean, he was bound to come back sometime. So I guess him versus Brock. It should be fun. I'm not gonna shoot it down just yet, but that uh, should be. Uh, Pretty fun. A lot of people have been wanting to see that match. Really? I know I have. Yeah. Huh. That's I like mean, one of the top two or three people that uh, they people have wanted to see Lesnar fight since he got back or have a match with since he came back. I mean, I guess because I guess he's Randy Orton. I guess because he's been gone for so long, yeah. I just haven't like. And Orton is c- consistently like one of the best superstars of all time. I mean, I'm gonna say it here. I love Randy Orton. Randy Orton's oh, yeah. the man. Oh yeah, and he's he is consistently great in every role that he is in, whether it's a face or a heel, and he puts on consistently good to great matches. I think the guy has a total package. Yeah, he likes charisma a little bit whenever he's a face. Who doesn't? I mean, not everybody can go out there and beat John Cena and you know just get the crowd going one way or another. But I mean, in my opinion, Randy Orton has it all, and he's like top ten all time for me. So Rollins beat Ziggler, and Ziggler is still going down the hill. Um, but uh, it's okay because he made an appearance in this next uh, little part. Basically, Vicky Guerrero, out of nowhere, you hear, excuse, I'm not going to do it. It's it's late at night. I don't want to wake everybody up. She said, excuse me. The crowd had a mixed reaction. JBL went nuts, but the crowd had a mixed reaction. She said she wanted to run SmackDown, and she basically got escorted out. Uh, I think they went to commercial. They came back. You saw Vicky being escorted out. Dolph Ziggler was standing right there. He was talking to his mom, how he lost the match again, but it's okay. And basically, uh, what's it called? Vicky Guerrero was like, hey, uh, Ziggler, you know, we had a history together. And Dolph was like, I've never seen this woman in my life. So uh, she got escorted out. And I'm sure that's the last we're going to see of Vicky Guerrero. New Day then came out. And uh, they had this little, like, you know, the normal like, New Day thing, you know, world two-time champs and feel the power and all that fun stuff. The Wyatts came on the screen, and they basically cut this little promo to challenge them to basically come to their place. Say, hey, you're coming here. If you want to fight us, you can come here. We ain't going there. You come here, and we'll see if you're a man or not. And uh, Kingston, Kobe Kingston automatically, he was just like, Sure, let's do it. We'll be there. And Xavier Woods is still concerned, and he didn't like this, and he was worried. He had that worried look on his face the entire promo, and uh, he walked out, left the ring, and uh, it was a weird, awkward moment, and he walked up the stage, and now he's going to New Japan to uh, be with the Bucks and Omega in the Elite. So uh, this feud has been pretty fun. I do have to say so myself. Yeah, and Xavier Woods, I swear to God, if he turns on the New Day, he is done. He is done. If I will he, personally make it my life's mission to make this man's life a living hell. If anything, he'll just, like, kind of do the Daniel Bryan thing when Dan Bryan was in the Wyatts. Uh, you know, Xavier's got that crazy hair going for him, so, I mean, maybe he can put it in some crazy thing, and the reason he walked out tonight was because he was put under the spell of the Wyatts, and they're going to go to the place, and I'm really, really excited to see the New Day. Just like, can you imagine the New Day just wandering in like a grass field, and all of a sudden they find this <laughs> little hut, and like Biggie, like, like Biggie and Kofi Kingston with their colorful, colorful shirts are surrounded in this like, 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 ugh, like dark place, and they just walk in, and it's all dark, and then like the light flickers on, and then you see, uh, you see what's his name? You see friggin' Bray and uh, the other two jobbers. And all of a sudden, they show another person in a uh, in a the sheep mask or whatever. They take it off. It's Xavier Wood, like he just got a, like attacked, and now he's like, I don't even know. He's like invested with a demon inside of him, and he's just like, I told you, like I don't know. He just has this like demented look on his face. But uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see what happens next, and I'm really uh, intrigued on what's going to happen. So the main event was Team USA, which was Big Show, Zack Ryder, the Dudleys, Jack Swagger, Mark Henry, Kane who I thought was from Parts Unknown, but uh, I guess uh, I guess Parts Unknown is uh, currently in America. And then Apollo Crews versus Team We Are Not From USA, We Also Hate Each Other, which had Mr. DDP Yoga himself. Uh, we had Kevin Owens, Sheamus, and Del Rio, which were the heels. And you had the Lucha Dragons, Sami Zayn, 
and Cesaro, which were all the faces. What were they thinking when they put these two, or all these people, together on the same team and thought it was going to work? Which, I guess it did. I guess they worked out for the most part. But I just thought that was crazy. But I understand what they're doing because it's USA versus everybody else. But basically, this match ended with Big Show and Zack Ryder standing tall for Team USA. And they stood on the ropes and uh, said happy for the July to everyone. So uh, this Raw was better than I expected. Uh, I put a poll up on Twitter and uh, it was 50-50 for uh, did you like it or did you not. So, uh, you know, for those people, it was split. For me, I really liked it. It was better than I expected. For the possibility of it being one of the lowest rated Raws, I really feel like they did pretty good. Because they could have just thrown this out the window like they did when the Warriors and the uh, the Cavs were in the playoffs. Uh, and, the, you know, the NHL playoffs were going on too. They could have just thrown it in the garbage, but they didn't. They actually did something with this. So, I, I felt it was pretty good. I thought it was very good too. I mean, Ryder deserves like, all the good things that he gets. I know people kind of hate on him because, oh, he became bitter and sour in, like, 2012, whenever his push kind of went away. But, I mean, the guys worked hard. The guy loves WWE. And uh, I think the guy, I mean, I gave the guy a flag for a while, but he's a good guy. He deserves it. He is a good guy. And, uh, man, I don't know. It just, ever since he lost that title right after Mania, it's just like, come on. Like, you could have done so much with that. Uh, I don't know, but uh, what are you going to do? I realized that we forgot to talk about John Cena versus the... or John Cena and AJ Styles in the club. Basically, Cena came out and he was like, hey, you know, the, the club's a bunch of little bitches. Come out here and fight me. And the club came out and they're like, hey, we're just going to come out here every week and beat the crap out of you. On Christmas, I'm going to dress up like Santa Claus and beat you up. Uh, on Mother's Day, I'm going to come out here and beat you up on Halloween. Uh, and uh, even, today's the 4th of July, so we might as well do it right now. And they came down, they beat the crap out of them, and then Enzo and Cass came out and helped clear the ring. And then Cena no sold the detail and got up and was ready to go again. I like the, I got hit in the face like 25 times. I like the fact that AJ Styles has been really, really, really jabbing at the fact uh, of Cena burying people. Because I think that's the greatest thing. Because he had that little thing where he was like, you're going to bury me with the shovel. And he did a little shovel motion that could probably be a gif. It'd be better if it was Triple H doing it. But you had the two little inside jokes of, uh, you know, from Gallows and Anderson's podcast with the names and stuff. And the, the, the not the name with drops, the but yeah, with, with the ski at the end. And then you had uh, Carl Anderson talking about his wife. I don't know. I just, I thought it was a funny promo. And I really, really like the club. And I really hope they don't do anything bad with the club because, I mean... I think that it's uh, it's going to take time for the normal people, the normal fans, to know who these guys are. But if you're if you know if you watch them wrestle in New Japan or Ring of Honor, and you listen to their podcast, and uh, you really know who these guys are, and you could really tell their personality. And honestly, this was a good promo to uh, show who they are. I guess you can say. So I don't know. I uh, I like this AJ Styles and Cena thing. And basically, at the pay per view, they're going to be facing. Uh, John Cena and Enzo and Cass so I'm glad that uh, Enzo and Cass uh, are going to be teaming with John Cena because it didn't look like they were doing so good uh, you know, facing the social jobbers so uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that but uh, good segment, I liked it so that was Raw, like I said fun show and uh, if you want to uh, go check out Britton you can follow him on the Twitter uh, at Britton95 and also on YouTube, I think it's just Britton Harrison I'll have links down below but, uh, Britton, it's been fun, and uh, thank you for being on for this first one. So that was Monday Night Raw for July 4th. Uh, I hope you liked it. Let me know. I want feedback. Leave it in the comments down below. Leave it on Twitter. Anything. I just need to know what you guys think. Uh, because, like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this. I want to make it good. I want to make it to the best that I can. And I want to have fun with this. Feedback is good. Let me know what I did good. Let me know what I did bad. And uh, hopefully I can incorporate those into the next one. I really don't have a set schedule for these. So they're probably just going to come out whenever I do them. And uh, whenever I'm done editing them and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully at one point there will be a schedule. And uh, hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, let me know. Thank you guys for listening to this first one. And I'll talk to you guys later. Come, come. DVDs 
and I am the best in the world. Thank you, Pico. Dang. Cutting that out.